I like protesters, but the ones that won't let you answer are afraid of the truth. That's a simple rule. Be afraid. Be very, very afraid. I don't know how you would characterize the gang leaders who got 13-year-old kids hopped up on crack and sent them out onto the street to murder other African-American children. Maybe you thought they were good citizens. She didn't. She didn't. You are defending the people who kill the lives you say matter. Tell the truth. That was a fiery Bill Clinton receiving all kinds of criticism for that exchange with Black Lives Matter protesters. But uh, in response to some of that harsh uh, feedback, if you will, the former president uh, stopped short of actually apologizing. Take a listen. So I did something yesterday in Philadelphia I almost want to apologize for it, but I want to use it as an example of the danger threatening our country. Well, of course, he was attempting to defend both his own record and his wife's record. Uh, we'll see what happens with him on the political side, but I think it was brilliant. And joining me now, someone I think agrees, Sheriff David Clark. Sheriff Clark, well, when you saw a, a, a Democrat, uh, his wife running for president, Bill Clinton out there saying to Black Lives Matter something that we've heard very few politicians, certainly on the left say, what, 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 how did it make you feel? Charles, hell has frozen over. <laughs> the man that the Congressional Black Caucus said was the first black president is now out parroting Sheriff David Clark's narrative on this subversive group of renegades called Black Lives Matter. It, Bill told the truth, but he kind of stepped in it. I would love to be a fly on the wall the next time he and Mrs. Bill Clinton get together. She's out groveling before this group. She's out pandering to this group, trying to get their support, and then he comes along and tells the truth. But I'll tell you what right now, and I'm a little surprised at this, that the uh, GOP or the RNC isn't already running ads. Just using that clip that you just played, and you don't do it in suburban areas, you do it in black areas, and you do it incessantly all the way through November. Here's what Bill Clinton thinks of Black Lives Matter. And yet, you know, I got to tell you, uh, this aired during our show last night, uh, Sheriff Clark, and uh, of course, I got a, a fair amount of negative feedback, and, and the, and the re replies anger me so much when, when black people say, hey, uh, you know, uh, there, there are white criminals, and, and you know, the sort of, uh, why don't we ever talk about white on white crime? We're talking about black genocide here, you know, the amount of black people that will kill each other in Chicago over the weekend, and, and we've got to be honest, in our neighborhoods, we do often glorify drug dealers and people like that. Oh, without a doubt, but you know, they, that's easily uh, swatted away. When you look at the rates of crime, you know, I know they like to bring this up that, you know, whites kill whites too. But if you look at the rates, what happens in the black community dwarfs what happens in other communities. But look, like I said, Bill Clinton told the truth, okay? He let his emotion get the best of him, but he told the truth. He even used the word the truth. And that's what we're talking about here. They created this monster. They breathed life into this monster called Black Lives Matter. When you create a monster, uh, Charles, then you have to feed the beast. And when you can no longer feed the beast, the beast will turn on you and eat you. And that's what we're seeing here. And that's why I think this is so fantastic. You know, uh, and, and the, the, the whole thing uh, today, I was reading where one, uh, one university canceled a, a party with a Kentucky Kentucky Derby theme because some other students claimed it was racist because it goes back over a hundred years. I mean, are they ever going to draw the line with this stuff because it gets more absurd every day? It gets more absurd. Look, these snowflakes on these college campuses, they're offended by anything. They're offended by the fact that uh, it might be cloudy in the morning, and so they'll find some reason. But the thing is, when you tolerate that stuff on these college campuses, when I say you, I'm talking about these college presidents and these boards. When they tolerate uh, this stuff, they just continue to push. This is a totalitarian movement. This is a, a group of people that has no tolerance for anybody else's view. They're out looking for some phantom reason to be offended about something, and I think that uh, it's high time that these university presidents uh, get a pair of stones and start pushing back. Tell these students to get back to class, open a book, and start to learn something with the thousands and tens of thousands of dollars that they're spending for a college education and deal with that other stuff, uh, you know, on their own time. Before I let you go, you talked about the GOP repackaging Clinton's comments, showing him in black neighborhoods. 
Could there be a successful counter Black Lives Matter movement, a counter victimization movement within the black community that could be successful? Sure, but it's got to be led, and, and that's the problem. You're not going to find uh, many people that are going to have the courage to step out and do it. Look, if any Republican said what Bill Clinton said yesterday, they'd be called a racist. It'll be interesting to see if, uh, once again, Bill Clinton becomes, becomes a racist, because that happened to him after he went after Barack Obama in 2008, and he was very hurt by that. Yeah. Dr. Uh, uh, Sheriff Clark, thanks a lot. Really appreciate every time you're on the show. My pleasure, Charles.